my name is Dr. Genevieve Hale. I am an associate professor at Nova Southeastern University College of Pharmacy and a practicing pharmacist at MMR Healthcare in Boynton Beach, Florida, which is a primary care or internal medicine clinic. I'm extremely excited to talk to you today about collaborative practice as I do work collaboratively with two MDs, three nurse practitioners, some LPNs, medical assistants and other ancillary staff. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, the best way in order to help with the quality of care of patients is through collaborative practice. So with that said, I'm going to go through today what collaborative practice is the laws that are involved for pharmacists now with collaborative practice, and hopefully clarify any confusion that you've had prior to listening to this today. Let's first discuss what is a collaborative pharmacy practice agreement. So literally by definition, it is a written agreement between a licensed pharmacist and a licensed physician in which a collaborating physician authorizes a pharmacist to provide specified patient care services to the collaborating physician's patients. So that's just a mouthful of pretty much saying that you minimally need to have a licensed pharmacist and a licensed physician to agree uh, in writing that the pharmacist will be assisting a physician in helping them with their patients. And they will have to specify in writing what those patient care services will be. In order for pharmacists to practice under a collaborative pharmacy practice agreement, there are a few stipulations. First being that they have to have an active pharmacy license. Second being that they need to have a degree in as a doctor of pharmacy or have completed five years of experience as a licensed pharmacist if they do not hold that PharmD degree. Next, you will have to complete an initial 20 hour course that is I approved by the Board of Pharmacy as well as the Board of Medicine and Osteopathic Medicine. You have to maintain at least $250,000 of professional liability insurance to protect yourself. And then lastly, you, you have to have some sort of system in place, you and the physician that will maintain a record of all the patients you receive services under your care through the collaborative practice agreement for a minimum of five years. Within the actual written content of the collaborative pharmacy practice agreement, there are a few things that must be on that paper uh, in order to be approved. First being the name of the patients that you and the physician will be collaborating on, the chronic health conditions that you will manage together, as well as the medications that are involved with these conditions, Next, the circumstances in which a pharmacist can perform or evaluate a laboratory or clinical test. Similarly, any conditions or events that take place in helping the patient care process under the collaborative practice agreement, there needs to be some sort of time frame in place in which notifications or communication needs to occur between the pharmacist and collaborating physician. There needs to be beginning and end dates for the actual collaborative pharmacy practice agreement and a termination procedure, uh, which lastly, the next thing kind of goes along with this, saying that there is a statement that is in there that specifically draws out that the agreement can be terminated in, at any point in writing by either party. It's also important to note that the collaborative pharmacy practice agreement will terminate at the two year mark automatically if it's not renewed by the collaborating pharmacist and physician. The pharmacist and the collaborating physician must maintain on file the actual written agreement at the practice location in order for it to be readily available upon inspection by a department or the board or whoever needs to see this agreement. And then lastly, that in order for anything to actually be implemented into practice under a collaborative practice agreement, the pharmacist who enters the agreement must have signed copies from, of themselves and the collaborating physician minimally and submit that to the board of pharmacy before anything could take place. 
As mentioned within the actual written agreement, you need to specify which chronic health conditions will be managed collaboratively between the pharmacist and physician. The ones that are approved by the current Board of Pharmacy and Board of Medicine and Osteopathic Medicine include arthritis, asthma, COPD, type 2 diabetes, HIV or AIDS, as well as obesity, and then any chronic condition that's adopted by these boards um, in the future.